today almost everybody uses containers. You might not be using containers for all your applications, but you're almost certainly using containers in one capacity or another. And that means that almost everyone is building container images. Pay attention, container images, not Docker images. There is no such thing as a Docker image. There is only a container image which can be built by Docker or by somebody else. And now I figured out that I'm going off the rail, so sorry for that. Let's get back to where I was. You might be building images using Docker. You might be building images using Nerdcuttle or Kaniko or Podman or one of the many other tools. And what all those have in common is that they all use Docker file. You can use one tool or another to build container images and you are almost certainly, most likely, using Docker file to specify what that image should be. But we could think about the problem in a different way. Maybe we do not need Dockerfile or any other specification for container images. Maybe we could have a system that would figure out what to do, how to do it, and what the image should be based on the code of the application that should be baked into those images. How about saying, this is my code, figure out what to do, figure out what should be done, figure out how something should be done. Do not ask me any questions, just do it. Go, figure it out. And while we're at that subject, wouldn't it be great if we could have such a Docker file absent type of system, system that doesn't require Docker file or anything like that, that would work on my laptop, inside Kubernetes clusters or CI/CD pipelines or anywhere else. So. No Docker file, figure it out, works everywhere. That should be the mantra, or at least that should be something, or that is something that we're going to explore in this video. Now, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that we can indeed build container images, again, not Docker images, container images without Docker file or any other specification. We can have a system capable of figuring out what to build by evaluating the code of a project. We can have a system that works almost everywhere. The bad news, however, is that we might need to combine a few tools to get what we need. So let's explore how to build container, not Docker. I'm on a crusade telling people not to say Docker images. Anyways, let's figure out how to build container images locally and inside Kubernetes clusters without having to write Docker file. And while we're at it, we'll discuss whether such a thing makes sense in the first place. We'll do that at the very end, because maybe all this doesn't make any sense, or maybe it's great. We'll see. So stick to the end if you want to hear whether all this makes sense. And right now, we are going to jump into the first use case. How can we build container images locally? Let's start by taking a quick look at what I have in a project that I'm going to use for the demo. So I'm going to execute ls-1 and you can see that I have config, I have creds, I have go mode, image yaml, main go, doesn't matter what I have. It's a tiny, silly demo project. What does matter is that there is no Docker file, no Docker file. So let's see whether I can build an image without a Docker file and whether I can do that well. So the first and the most important component we need to accomplish this Docker fileless uh, type of goal is PEC CLI, which is the CLI for build packs. So we are going to use cloud native build packs project to try to build container images without Docker file. So I'm going to execute PEC build and give it a name. Let's say silly demo. That sounds like a great name for a demo. So let me hit the enter key. There we go. And now it is pulling uh, different layers of the image and building something and doing whatever needs to be done. And while we are waiting for this to happen, let me tell you something extremely important. Are you ready? Okay. Subscribe, like the video and join the channel if you want to support it. Thank you so much. And we have the image. It's built. We have silly demo image built without Docker file. It figured out that the project is mostly Go, and then it figured out what should be the base image, how it should construct the image, it figured out everything. That's what build packs do. They evaluate, the project actually evaluates 
the source code of the project we want to use to build the container image and then it figures out what is the best base image and how it should be formatted and what it should contain and all that jazz and as a result of somebody else figuring it out all I had to do is execute the command I get the image now I'm not sure whether that's a good image or a bad image so let's take a look what we got but before we do let's go to a brief history of build packs it all started with Heroku and then it forked into two different projects, one by Pivotal and another one by Heroku. And then they figured out that it doesn't make sense to be separated and to do the same thing differently and what's or not. And the companies merged and what's or not. And we now we have a new version, the latest version called Cloud Native Build Packs, which is a combination of what Pivotal and Heroku built. And I just realized that history may be boring. So let's go back to taking a look at the image that we got. And we can do that with the good old docker image ls command and then you can see all the images that i have in my locally running docker and one of them the most important one is the one i just built which is called silly demo which was built 42 years ago i'm not sure what's going on i'm not sure how that could have happened i promise i guarantee that i just built it so there is some mishap there with dates what's or not what does matter here is that my image is built and it is 72 megabytes big now depending on what you do and what you how you do it and so on and so forth you might say hey 72 megabytes is great but i will tell you that for my application go application it is probably a binary that is a few kilobytes maybe 10 kilobytes 50 kilobytes big 72 is huge it's massive i would like it to be at least half of that size because there is no need for a single binary to be an image of 72 megabytes. So let's see whether we can optimize this, whether we can make the image smaller without too much fuss, because if there's too much fuss, then I might go back to using doc file, right? Now what I can do is configure the default builder and tell buildpacks or pack CLI to use some other group of base images builders instead of the one I'm using right now, the one that is uh, used by default. So I'm going to do that by saying, hey, pack, I want to configure default builder and it will be Paketo builder packs slash builder. And here comes the important part. And that's the tag should be tiny. I want tiny, tiny, tiny builders because actually I do not care how big the builders are. What I do care is how big the final image is. And that happens to be related with builders, which is kind of silly, but hey, what can you do? And now you might be wondering, hey, what is Paketo? How did that come into being? And well, it's simple. Uh, build packs can be extended with additional build packs. That sounds strange, right? So let me rephrase. Build packs can be extended with additional builders. And one of those builders is a project called Paketo. You can use any builders, you can use any system to build your images, you can write your own, which is potentially amazing because then you can write your own builders for your own company that comply with whichever rules you need them to comply. But now I'm going down the lazy route and I'm using Paketo build packs or Paketo builders, which are one of the most popular, if not the most popular set of builders for build packs and I chose them to be tiny, right? They can be huge, tiny, whatever, right? Uh, but I don't even actually understand why it wouldn't be tiny always. Maybe because you uh, long story. Let's skip back to do actually not skip. Let's go back to the demo. So I'm going to repeat the same command. But this time the result should be different because I told build packs that I want to use different builders than the one that come by default. So I'm going to execute pack build silly demo again, enter key, poof. Let's see how it goes. And since I do not want to waste your time, let's skip to the end of the process. It can take uh, half a minute or something like that to download all the images required. That's happening only once. So let's skip to the end of the process. And there we go. Successfully built image silly demo. And that's the same thing as happened before. So I had an image before, now I have a new image. But what I really, really, really want to see is whether this image is now really, 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 really Tiny. So Docker image LS and there we go. Silly demo. I still have the silly demo and it was still built 42 years ago, which sounds poof. Anyways, 
Uh, what matters here is that now it is 13 megabytes big, which is less than 50% of what it was before. I think it could get smaller, but okay, I, I can live with this size. This is okay. And the reason why I'm showing you all this is to make sure that you can choose different builders. You can choose the project that provides the builders that do what you want them to do and still have the simplicity of building container images without having Docker file. Heck, you can build your own builders. You should do that if you're not stranger to Ruby. I think it's written in Ruby, maybe not. Anyways, one of those strange languages that I used 15 years ago that I do not want to use ever again. Now there is one huge problem with build bugs. It works only and exclusively as far as I know, and that might have changed, but as far as I know, it works only with Docker. And now this is not me trashing Docker, which I did in some of the previous videos, but simply Docker does not work in Kubernetes unless you mount sockets and you make sure that you install Docker over there. And then you would have two container runtimes because Kubernetes itself cannot run containers with Docker. It's a mess, right? So long story short, we cannot, we shouldn't use Docker in Kubernetes clusters and build packs depend on Docker. So that makes it useless outside of my laptop. Actually, on my laptop, I prefer NerdCuttle that comes with Rancher Desktop. I'm not using Docker at all. I had to install it for this demo and I'm still suffering because of that. But anyways, if you're fine with Docker on your laptop, that's great, but you cannot use Docker in Kubernetes. So we need to figure out a different way to use build packs in Kubernetes clusters. And we can. So let me show you the manifest that I'm going to use that is in image.yaml and the kind is image. And that kind comes from kpack. I will show you kpack later. What does matter is that I'm specifying what tag the image should have, which is VFR6 silly demo, additional tags if I need uh, additional tags like latest and all one service account name that contains the credentials for the container image registry where the image should be pushed, what builder to use, and uh, what is the source. And source in this case is GitHub. I'm using GitHub. I'm going to pull the source code from GitHub and then build an image based on that and push it to a container registry. If you would be using this from pipelines, you would probably not pull from GitHub because pipelines like Jenkins Pipeline or CircleCI or Tekton or whatever you're using probably already have the source code clone and then you would not use Git. You would use the local directory or whatever the name is of the parameter. Nevertheless, I have my manifest and if I apply this to my Kubernetes cluster, I should get an image built and pushed to a registry of choice. So let me create this resource with kubectl create. It must be created, it cannot be applied because the name should be different uh, every time we execute it. Anyways, kubectl create and the file name is image yaml and now my Kubernetes cluster will figure out what to do together with kpack and while waiting for that to happen, let me show you, let me show the kpack. That's a third project that we are using today, right? Pilpex, Paketto, and now kpack. There we go. It extends Kubernetes, blah, 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 blah. It uses cloud native uh, build packs and basically it's cloud native build packs or build packs that I used from the very beginning, but this time running in Kubernetes clusters, not depending on Docker and so on and so forth. Same thing, but in Kubernetes. Now let's take a look at the pods in the build namespace where I apply that resource. And if I execute kubectl namespace build get pods, we can see that there is one pod. It is still initializing. There are six different containers that need to do different things, whatever those things are. I do not care. What I do care is that I want to get the container image pushed, in my case today, to Docker Hub or any other registry. Since kpack creates a new custom resource definition in Kubernetes and that custom resource definition is called image or images, I can also list all the images I have in that namespace with kubectl namespace build get images and we can see that there is silly demo. The status is uh, the readiness is unknown because the image was not built yet. It will take a couple of more moments until the process is finished. It's a bit slow, but hey, what can you do? So let me repeat the same command, get images and there we go. You see, there is the image. It's ready, ready says true. The latest image is that one. That's the latest image we built for that image. It can have many tags, right? And all of them would be pushed 
to the registry and uh, it should have been pushed to the registry. Let's double check that. But before I double check that the image was pushed, let me take a quick look at the logs and to see the logs, I need to know the name of the image that was built, the latest one, the one that I'm interested in, and I can get that name with KP uh, CLI, which I already installed. The instructions are in the gist. Hey, I forgot. Yeah, gist with all the instructions, commands, and everything is in the description, the link to the gist. So go and check it out if you want to reproduce what I'm doing. And now I'm going to execute KP build list, and the namespace is build. And I can see the same output more or less like for the images, but this is for the builds, right? Uh, one image can be built many, many times. And I'm going to copy silly demo Q8, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to export image variable to be whatever is the name of that image. And then I can take a look at the logs. I can do that by going through the logs of the pod itself, but that's painful because there are many containers in that pod. Or I can execute KP build logs the name of the image and the namespace, and then I can see everything that happened, right? Uh, which I do not really care about logs for building images unless something goes wrong. So let's go to the Docker Hub, to my Docker Hub, and see whether I really got the image and all the tags pushed over there. And there we go. There's the latest, there's 001, and there is one with the SHA, and there should be another one. Uh, whatever the, what's the one actually? There should be another one. No, three, three images. That's what I built, right? And three images are there, three tags actually uh, of the images are there. So everything worked, everything is peachy. I do not need Dockerfile. Now, whether I really don't need Dockerfile or no, you need to wait for the end. Now, using YAML to build images, at least in this form, in the form of KPAC, is kind of silly because I need to specify explicitly which tags I want to build and I need to specify the git repository with the branch, with the commit, and maybe I don't have to do that, I can use local directory. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that you're likely going to have to change that YAML every time you want to build a new image because every new image is a new release and new release means new tag. So you would need to do a lot of said commands, especially if you're doing it from pipelines. And it's kind of annoying to have to change YAML every time you want to build something, even though I love YAML, but that's not really how we should be building images. I prefer commands because commands are easier to manipulate when there are variables included depending on the build. So let's see how we can build those container images for inside Kubernetes, but this time using a CLI instead of uh, YAML. Now, before I build uh, my image using CLI instead of YAML, I need to tell KPEC what is my service account, where are the credentials inside the Kubernetes cluster where it will build, because without credentials, it cannot know how to push something to my container registry. So I'm going to execute KP config, default service account that I want to use is called registry creds and service account namespace is built. And now it should have all the credentials, everything it needs not only to build the image, but push it, in my case, to Docker Hub. So the command is kp image, we want to create something, that something will be called silly demo or two, the namespace is build, the builder is silly demo, the tag is silly demo or two, I want to get and the source code from a Git repository, and I want it to be this specific revision. Again, if you're doing this from pipelines, you would already have the source code over there in your pipelines. You would not need to fetch it from Git, but in this case, I'm not using pipelines, so I'm fetching it from Git. And the image resource was created. This, the result of this is exactly the same or more or less the same as uh, what I did with YAML file, YAML specification, but it is so much easier to change tags and revisions and whatever else you need to change from one build to another if it's a CLI command, especially if it is running from your pipelines. So I really, really, really prefer CLI in this case, especially for automation, than YAML that needs to be changed every single time. This is better. Now, there is no need for me to show that the image was indeed built and so on and so forth. No need for that. Uh, we can jump straight into conclusion, right? Uh, I should probably show the files that I used to set this up. Ah, no need. You can check it from the gist. Let's talk about pros and cons. Should you use KPEC together with BuildPEC and together with K... What is the name? Capetto? 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 I forgot. Uh, Paquetto. 
Paketo is the name. Should you use pill packs, Paketo and K-Pak or not? What are the pros and cons? What should we start with? Let's go with negativity first, uh, the negative things, the cons, right? And the first one is that Billpack spec itself or CNB uh, works only with Docker. That's silly today, right? Because Docker is one of the many container engines and many different tools that can build container images and they can all work with the Docker file. So why don't they work with Billpacks? Uh, I have nothing against Docker, right? Use Docker, but not everybody uses Docker. I like Nerd Cuttle, which is 100% or almost 100% compatible with Docker, but Billpacks do not work there. That's silly. And that's also what prevents me from using Billpacks outside my laptop anyways, right? Because Docker does not work well anywhere except on laptops. Now that YAML for Kpack is uh, silly. It's really silly. CLI is so much better than that YAML that you need to modify every single time. And since there is CLI, I'm not sure whether that's a negative point. No, that's not a negative point. Uh, scratch it, right? Now, a truly negative, potentially uh, problematic part is that it is hard to guarantee consistent results. If we use Paketo in one place, we might easily forget to use Paketo in another place. If we might have additional files depending on the context what we're building and then it might choose different uh, builder. So it is very hard to guarantee consistent results of building images in let's say laptop, in pipelines, in here and there. So consistency might be complicated unless we specify explicitly which builder to use but that removes uh, part of the appeal of using build packs, right? We should not have to specify almost anything except this is my code, figure it out. So consistency might be a problem. Now let's talk about pros. What are the good things? Uh, to begin with, uh, the way it works is great, right? Who doesn't like uh, something to be easier than something else? I can just say build container image, right? Um, I cannot really do that. I need to be more specific because then I get big images or different images, but more or less it works great and it's very, very easy to use and one can forget about Dockerfile. Maybe, who knows? Documentation is great. It's absolutely amazing for all three projects that we explored, for Buildpacks, for Paketo, for KPEC. Um, docs are amazing, love it. It's simple, did I say simple? Yeah, definitely simple to use. It works locally, it works in clusters, it works in pipelines, it works almost everywhere, more or less. You might need to install different tools, you might need to configure things differently, which now when I think about it, makes it maybe harder to set up than just Docker file, different tools using the same Docker file. But let's say that that's a good point, right? Works everywhere as long as you have all the tools you need. Now the real question here, right, is not whether build packs together with KPEG, together with Paquet or whatever else you are using is great or not. It's absolutely great, but does it serve the purpose? Are we really better off without Dockerfile? Is writing Dockerfile sufficiently complex to warrant using build packs and other tools around it, right? So uh, you need to ask yourself that same question. Is Dockerfile pain or no? If you have no problem writing Docker file, if you already have Docker file, then maybe there is no point in using build packs. If you don't want to write Docker file, if you want to make it even easier, then uh, build packs are actually great. Even though there are some problematic things, it's absolutely great. So the real question is, do you think that it is too complicated to write Docker file? It is too error prone or it requires too much time and you want to save it? If you want to do that, build packs are great. If Dockerfile is something that you eat for breakfast, then there is no point. So think about that Dockerfile, yes or no. And if it's no, then Billpacks, it's an amazing project and you should use it. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments.